Welcome to Activate Your Introvert, the weekly radio show to uncover and unlock the entrepreneurial skills in your business. In this week's show, Introvert Myth of the Week. Introverts are no good at conversation. Leadership Idea of the Week. How a small beginning to your meeting is worthwhile for better meetings. And a discussion with Nick Shelton. Nick specialises in social strategy to help introverts, shy and socially awkward people upgrade their lives and lifestyles. Nick's written a great book called An Introvert's Guide to World Domination. I was shooting the breeze with Nick recently on Zoom and we started having a talk about small talk and I sprung on him the idea to record our discussion. So this will be the result. But just before that, a plea. Would you do me a big favour please? I'm after about a minute, two minutes of your time to answer no more than 10 questions and a short survey about this podcast. The details are on the sleeve notes or if you go to introvertingbusiness.co.uk slash podcast. Really, really appreciate your time. Have you ever wanted to get better at engaging your staff and improving their performance? Let's be honest, if you're responsible for a team, your answer has to be yes. Here's an opportunity to join 10 thought leaders, get a range of different ideas on the subject for free in the comfort of your own room. Performance Through People is a five-day summit running from April 12th to 16th. You can drop into any of the two presentations a day if you book your free tickets in advance. Go to introvertinbusiness.co.uk slash performance through people. I'll be talking about meetings and some highlights from my book, Running Meetings That Make Things Happen, in one of the presentations. The book was recently quoted in The Economist, which is a brilliant surprise for me. Speaking of meetings and small talk has led me to think of this week's idea. Get everybody to say something in the first few and the last few minutes of your meetings. It will improve engagement and follow-up actions. It might seem painful at the time because you want to jump on and get on with the subject, but stick with it. It's worth it. For the beginning part, it's important people join in and don't feel stressed about it as that helps them to contribute more later on. One way of doing this and helping your team to gel is to ask each person to give a 30 second answer to the following question. What one work success and non-work success have you had in the last week? It starts the meeting positively, helps people realise they've had good things in the last week and helps them share stories with other team members. It's a bit like a small talk at the beginning of a conversation. It's a conversational lubricant. At the end, go round and ask, what's the most important two actions you're taking from this meeting? And then, how do you rate the meeting on a scale of 1 to 10? The score is incredibly useful at helping you all understand how to improve your meetings for each other. If somebody scores it low, ask what one thing they'd like you to do differently next time. But if they score seven, eights, and 9s, don't bother asking. Do let me know what tip you'd like to help you activate the entrepreneurial skills in your business or what introvert myth you'd like exposed. Drop me an email, give me a call or add it as a comment to your review on the iTunes store. I would love to hear from you. But now it's time for this week's interview. Hi, Nick. Hello, John. How are you doing? I'm doing great. It's a wonderful day. It's good, isn't it? One of the subjects I know we both get asked lots of questions about, and we've talked about in the past, is small talk, which introverts generally, shall we say, don't like. Right. And so I just just thought we could spend a couple of minutes explore that. But really quickly, what is small talk, do you think? So I think that so small talk is just that that really beginning level of conversation that you get to before it gets a little bit deeper and more personal. So a lot of times people have their guard up when they first meet someone. And I know that people want to 
break past that just general talking about the weather, you know, talking about food, just things like that, uh, and then get to the more deep deep uh, stuff. So in a way, in a way, it's a bit like us talking rather than getting to the deep stuff, which is how to do better small talk. We're we're doing small talk because what we're doing is we're talking about what is small talk. And there's all the listeners going, get to the juicy stuff, John and Nick. Right. Why do you think introverts don't like it? I mean, I, I've got a few ideas, but one of the things I, I find is that lots of introverts aren't particularly interested in ego and, and ego-driven conversations. What, what other things do you find that introverts don't like you for? Well, I think that they just feel that it's, well, one, it's kind of like a waste of time that they're just spinning their wheels. And if they're going to, they don't necessarily want to have the conversation, but if they are having a conversation, they want it to mean something. And but you, you can't skip that part. You can't just go straight into, tell me about your passions, you know, because you say, I just met you. I don't feel comfortable telling you about my passion. But I think underestimate how important just that initial banter is. Yeah, I, I call it a conversational lubricant, allows the rest of it to happen. So shall we do the bit that listeners really want to know then? Sure, yeah. Some tips on how to improve small talk. What's your, what's your favorite one? How, if I was an introvert and you're telling me to get better, what's your first starting point? So to kick off the small talk, to start it, is yeah. that your... To, yeah, absolutely. Oh, I usually start off with observations. So it's just anything that I observe right here, I would maybe talk about the plant in the background there. And uh, <laughs> yes, the virtual, yeah, no, no, it's an actual plant. It really, it really is a plant. It's not, yeah. it's not fake. Yeah, see, so I would. You thought it was green screen, that. didn't you? Or your jacket, your coat. Mm. Uh, okay. You know, this lets you know that I'm at least interested in uh, talking to you and yeah. I have some questions and then that gets it started. And then from there, mm. naturally it can build. And I'd say to get past that, uh, the quickest ways to get past that are either by asking advice from somebody, but you have to have a small talk to know what to ask advice about, mm. or sharing an embarrassing story. If you share an embarrassing story, that shows that you're vulnerable and you're open, and then usually yeah. the other person... I often call that, that stage. First thing, I, I think you're right about the questions, but the one thing I, I see lots of people go wrong with is they try and come out with a list of questions they're going to ask, like an interrogation. And I just right. go, forget all that nonsense. Yes, ask some questions, but some genuine questions to help uncover, as you say, what's going on. But this, the other stage I call it is get ready to get naked. Boom. Yeah. Because if you're vulnerable, but, but introverts, of course, don't like that bit because they quite often are quite private people. And I just say, find something that you're prepared to share with the world about yourself. Right. People, people know genuinely, and it's why I often talk about scuba diving. They know that I love scuba diving. And the great thing about people who come up and ask me about it, because it's written on my LinkedIn profile, I always do it when I do presentations. I write it into blogs and things. And people yeah. come and ask me about it. Getting naked for me is, well, the other thing is, you're absolutely right, but the other thing is, put that out into the world first as well. Right. Yeah, find that helps. Out there, then it helps people know mm. what they can talk to you about. I think there's a couple of mindset ones as well. We're absolutely right. We could talk for ages about why introverts don't like it. But I think you've got to change your mindset. If I go into a conversation going, I don't want this, I'm not going to enjoy it. Guess what? <laughs> I can guarantee I won't enjoy it. Right. So I think we've got to dump that mindset. Any other tips that you'd share? Right. So you just have to actually have a, a genuine interest. I think uh, mm. Jordan Peterson once said, listen to the person as though they know something that you need to know and that you want to listen in a way that they're going to tell it to you. So if you actually can say, I'm going to learn something here, I'm going to learn something from this person, yeah. then it shows they know that you're, that you can tell the difference between someone who's really listening to you and someone who's just kind of there passing the time. So if you're actually present for them, it's, it's easy for them to share with you. And if you don't make it about you, you make it about them. It's, that's a much easier way to mm. get that conversation going. Make it about. Yeah. So, so always be curious in what the other person. Approach everything like I want to learn something, basically. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes that can be a challenge. And I've seen people try and create a false persona. I just said, forget it. You've got to be honest. If your objective is to start a relationship, you can't start a relationship based on lies. 
So I think we've got to be honest with, with talking about who you are and, and things that are important to you. I think we could carry on for ages. I know I've picked too much of your time today, so I'm really grateful for that. When some of the listeners want to get back in touch with you, how can they do that? Uh, they can go to connectedintrovert.com. I really appreciate your time because we were just having a conversation and I pounced on you and said, let's talk about small talk. One of the things I love doing is collaborating with other introvert thought leaders around the world because it's, it's so good and, and we're good at it. Introverts are very good at networking and they're very good at this kind of conversation. Once you get beyond me, oh, I don't like it. So Nick, really appreciate your time. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you. And now it's time for Introvert Myth of the Week. Those crazy stories that I hear and you hear that some people actually believe. Introverts are not good conversationalists. A few days ago, I was on Zoom and wandered into a breakout room where four people were engaged in energetic conversation. You know the kind of conversation where words fly around, arms move, there's real energy, and everybody is clearly enjoying learning and talking to each other. It reminded me of the old days in the year 1 BC, where I'd be in a quiet local pub with a good friend, chatting energetically about anything and everything. And yes, I meant one year before COVID, although hopefully that's coming to an end soon. Those are the kind of conversations that we're told introverts don't have. Now, here's the thing. The four people in that Zoom room were all introverts, energetically chatting on Zoom. To quote Professor Laurie Helgo, introverts are energised and excited by ideas. They may not like superficial, polite discussion as they want openness, where people learn about each other and the conversation has a deeper meaning. Which of the following skills do you think are no good for conversationalists? Listening, suspending ego, self-awareness, thinking before speaking. So, introverts are good conversationalists. They don't always add lots of noise to the conversation. If the words everybody spoke were fewer, but all the more meaningful, would be that that be such a bad thing? Now, there's a thought. Thank you for listening to Activate Your Introvert. And I hope you've enjoyed this week's episode. I'd love to see your reviews on the iTunes store. Thank you once again and catch up with you next week.